So we've got more answers on cyber cab tires today. We're going to be discussing things like uh, why, I mean, shouldn't they be able to rotate them? Uh, how, how can you make them durable? I don't even get it. Gold paint. What are we talking about? And again, airless. Oh my gosh, we got to get into that. Uh, and we'll do that. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Aza. <laughs> So yesterday we had a chance to get started with Ian from Fast Wheels. If you don't know who he is, go back and watch yesterday's segment. He did a great introduction where he explains that, yes, he does in fact know what he's talking about. Uh, after 38 years, I hope you do. <laughs> because otherwise, my friend. My otherwise friend. there's a problem. Otherwise there's a problem. And uh, Ian is great because he goes out to these events. I've seen him at Fully Charged. I've seen him at the Muskegon Takeover. I imagine you might be back at the Muskegon uh, event in June next year. Hope to see you there. And hope to see all of you guys there as well. It'll be a whole hoot and a half. So one thing Franz von Holzhausen said just a couple days ago in a video shot at the Peterson Museum is that that gold stripe is going to remain on the tire. And I thought, oh, that's a, uh, okay. Well, if you're custom ordering every tire, if they're going to be bespoke tires, and by the way, if, if I want to get a bespoke tire, I better, I better check the limit on the gold card because, <laughs> but if I wish to get a million or 10 million tires, well, that's a different situation. When you want that many of something, you can get them. Can they make it with the gold stripe already on it? Sure. Yeah. Sure. As, as a matter of fact, you know, that's kind of fallen out of, uh, out of style, but back, you know, in the sixties, when I was, but a wee young lad, I remember every Seco muscle car going down the street had red stripe tires. Oh, it's the famous reds, you know, Firestone had mm. them, but yeah, but red stripes, white stripes. I mean, uh, it's been experimented with over the years. Um, uh, and it, there's no reason I don't see why you couldn't do a gold one. Sure. And I think the hidden advantage there could be that you know that they're the correct tires. And if you see the gold tires on a different car, you know that car better not be going over 85 because those those are the wrong tires. So I think those would be interesting. Now, uh, one thing that was pointed out is rotation. You can't rotate uh, front to back if the wheels are different sizes. Um, can you rotate left to right? Do you need to rotate? Well, yeah, there's, there is some small advantages going uh, left to right. It sort of depends on the vehicle. Not a lot of vehicles really require that. Front to back is nice. Side to side uh, is only beneficial, you know, in the case of sports cars or GTs that run a lot of camper, mm -hmm. that means, you know, when the, when the wheels are angled in at the top and out at the bottom, it tends to cause a lot of wear on the, on the inner shoulder of the tire. So in those cases, you know, if you're running some sort of an aggressive setup like that, it is nice to be able to go side to side because it'll even out the wear a little bit. But that's not what we're talking about with the CyberCab. I think this is going to have a very conservative uh, suspension system and alignment. It's, it's all going to be designed for long wear, ease of maintenance, etc. So, yeah, you, you won't be able to do front to rear rotation for sure. And I don't know that they bother going to the expense of the side to side. I don't think it's going to get you much in this case. Well, that's one I wanted to talk about is... Uh, because the tires are not going to be under substantial lateral load, you know, a Miata is an economy car. It is a, a, a low displacement engine, but I see them out at the track. People love racing them. Yeah. This car will never be raced. No. Does that mean I can get away with cheaper tires because they don't need to bear the lateral load or are they already going to be strong for rolling resistance? Well, I mean, um, the cheaper tire is kind of an open-ended term. I, I think initially all you're going to be able to get is the original tire. I mean, you know, because these are going to be commercial vehicles in a, in a situation like that, I don't think there's going to be, probably not for the first year or two, I don't think we're going to see much, but you know, normally free market kicks in and if there's enough of them in circulation, uh, competition will dictate that somebody else will probably come up with some alternatives, maybe with some. But I think the only factor to your point, Brian, is going to be interesting is going to be the rolling resistance uh, and the durability. You know, like if someone can prove that, hey, our tire is going to go another 10, 20,000 kilometers and offer the same rolling resistance and reasonable traction, I think that's where you're going to see uh, the competition step up. But no, there's, you know, when you take the human driver out of the equation, how it handles and so on, I mean, it, it needs to be quiet. It needs to be comfortable so that passengers don't object. But I don't think it's going to be a narrower focus in terms of what it needs to do. Now, on these wheels, because uh, another reason you don't want your wheels too, too big is because of all that extra weight uh, 
at high, especially at high speeds. Um, if you look at your Tesla Model S, Model Y, the smaller diameter wheel actually has an advantage in terms of efficiency because it is uh, less, it weighs less, you're spinning less weight. With wheels this big, do you think they may have optimized for city use over highway use, which, which would make sense for a taxi? Well, when we're talking about the wheels themselves, I mean, they are, everybody builds kind of the same idea. You, you know, we all have different standards, you know, when we build to the, the different OEMs that we build for each one of them has their own little tweak, but we have to test for radial fatigue. So that is the, the vertical loading on, on the wheel and tire to make sure that over its lifetime, you know, it can handle the amount of weight that we're expecting it to carry. Then we do cornering tests. So that is, at, you know, at a certain amount of G forced cornering, for long periods of time, it's you know it's going to try and twist the wheel, so we don't want the spokes to crack or fatigue from that. All of those types of tests, impact tests, for the cyber cab, it's no different. It, the wheel has to be built to withstand you know the tortures of everyday life and, and support the weight of the vehicle over its expected lifetime. So I don't think there'll be any changes there. I mean, obviously, what they need to do is optimize the weight. I, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to go with like a flow formed construction. That's what we use for our EV series wheels. That's what Tesla uses for almost all of their OEM wheels. It's a nice compromise between cost and strength and lightweight. Um, we're big fans of it here. So I, I'm pretty sure they're going to do that. And because even though they're large in diameter, they're, they're not running very wide tires. They can at least keep them fairly narrow. I don't think they're going to be wider. My guess would be probably somewhere around seven and a half inches at the widest, maybe eight tops. So they can save a little weight there, you know. Now, a question is, uh, we talked yesterday about in, in rolling resistance, we talked about that there's more rubber patch uh, length on the road. Um, there's more total diameter to the wheel. Does this mean that the tires will wear more slowly because there's just more rubber there? Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a great intuitive idea. If you if you make the tire twenty percent taller, it's going to be twenty percent greater in circumference. I mean, we're not talking about such big differences, but to exaggerate the case, sure. If you add more circumference to the tire, there's just more tire to go around. The tire rotates more slowly, and for every mile you travel, there's going to be less wear for sure. So that means that these tires could have, you know, again, just using a number twenty percent more life than a smaller wheel would. Yeah, we'd, we'd have to do the calculation, but yeah, right. if you change nothing else, it just by virtue of the fact, you know, that there's a longer path around the tire, that's going to be a direct correlation to how much uh, longer it's going to wear. Now, the sidewall, you see that it has more sidewall than even the smallest wheels available on another Tesla. That means we're going to have a little more road comfort, won't we? Yes, absolutely. Having that tall 60 series profile definitely gives you a noticeable improvement in, in both comfort and noise reduction. I tell you, the difference just between a long range and a performance Tesla is stark. It is stark. Although if you haven't had a chance to drive the Highland, that one is, uh, even the performance edition, it is so smooth. And of course, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, you can still get good deals on those. Um, you can support me other ways, but if you're looking to get the deals, I'm out of referrals, but I've thrown in a couple from other folks who still have the opportunity to save you money on your purchase of a new Tesla vehicle. Very exciting. Um, so then we've got just a couple of questions left. I can't tell you how many comments I had saying, oh, they're going to use the new airless tires. And I said, they are, and I said, they are not, those are not ready for prime time. A hundred years. Those aren't ready for prime time. Help me out. I'm, I'm with you on that. You know, uh, airless tires are like the hydrogen of the tire world. It's like the tire of the future and it always will be. You know, mm -hmm. We save hydrogen. Um, I, I tend to feel a little bit the same. It has its place. I mean, I think for, right. uh, you know, like for low speed equipment, for yeah. golf carts, for, you know, forklifts, uh, yeah. sure. anything where you've got a bunch of nails to move stuff yeah. around in the nail factory. Yes. Brilliant. Perfect. Absolutely but, brilliant. But at high speeds, they are not the solution. And the biggest problem is it's not a tire. It's a tire plus wheel. So yep. when it goes bad, you need to replace the entire wheel. Correct. Okay. And then run flats, are those still a thing? Oh, very much so. Yeah. I mean, I find it interesting that, um, I guess I'm surprised and not surprised. Tesla has never really jumped on board with them. The run flats are great technology in terms of you don't have to worry about carrying a spare anymore. Right. And I mean, we all know that if 
the rare occasion you do get a flat tire these days, it's always going to be at two in the morning where you're crossing <laughs> some bridge on the interstate that's four mm -hmm. miles long and it's pouring rain. It's always the worst circumstances. So that, to be able to just continue driving, knowing that, okay, I can at least, you know, make it another hour away or to a destination or get to a garage, I think it's a terrific feature. But it comes at a terrific penalty when we talk about EVs because they're not as efficient. You know, if we talk, if we go back to the discussion we had yesterday about rolling resistance, um, there's a high penalty with run flat tires and rolling resistance because they need all of that extra belting inside, they all that extra reinforcement mm. to be able to support the weight of the vehicle with no, you know, with with back to atmosphere pressure. So uh, I don't think they're going to. You know, I, I don't think they're going to gain a lot of traction in, as the EV movement continues onwards. Now, I, I, I might be selling tire engineers short. They've done miracles in the past. I mean, who would have thought we now live in, you know, uh, an era where you can have an all-weather tire that actually functions and can be certified as a, as a true winter tire, but can be driven all year round. So maybe something miraculous will happen and they'll, they'll achieve the same efficiency and ro low rolling resistance as conventional tires with a run flat. But today, I don't think that we're there yet. Today, we are not there. No. And yeah. And the car already relies on one technology that isn't done. Let's not introduce a bunch more. Mm -hmm. uh, other people say, oh, we got to wait for solid state. No, 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 no. Let's, let's just have the one over the horizon technology, not three, four, five. That's what killed the Dyson car. Yeah. Now, Sandy Monroe suggested, because these are going to be coming off the line so quick, could they do a single nut instead of four or six lugs to keep it on? Could they do a, a Formula One wheel lug? You could. I mean, you know, in the event that there was some compelling reason from a service standpoint, I mean, if the wheels were being changed regularly, it, it would be something, it could be something attractive to look at. But the fact of the matter is uh, a lot of garages are not really equipped to handle those. If you've ever seen it, you know, like I know in the case of Porsche, the center locks like on a 911 GT3 require something like, don't quote me on this number, but it's right. an absurd number. It's like 600 pounds. pounds or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, 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 you literally need two guys in the gorilla to tighten those things and take them off. Yeah. So I'm maybe not the best uh, maybe the manufacturing efficiency you would gain is not commensurate with the yeah. hassle it would induce down the road. I don't think so. And, and by the way, on the flat tire thing, what I wanted to say is, well, people say, well, but what if, but what if I do get a flat? And the answer is, you're thinking about it wrong. You hop out and you get in the next one. The car right. will know you have a flat. The car will pull you over safely, and another robo taxi will pull up behind you and you get in that one instead. Uh, and then you don't think about it again because a truck shows up and away she goes and yeah. tomorrow it's back in the other part of town. Exactly right. Ian, am I forgetting to ask anything? I don't think so. I mean, um, <laughs> the, the only thing that I took away from the cyber uh, cab event that I thought was interesting is that we saw those big aero covers. You know, they're obviously mm -hmm. super, you know, we've proved this in our own testing uh, with fast EV wheels. Having the aero covers makes a big difference uh, in terms of the efficiency. I found it fascinating that they were like full, what we called in the old hot rod days, moon discs, you know, these giant super flat dish plates. I'd, I'd be curious to see if that makes it into production because even though it is a low speed, more city environment car, I expect they want at least a little bit of brake cooling. Interesting to see how they uh, how they compensate for that. Well, I think uh, they don't need the brake cooling. It is front wheel drive, so you've got all your regen up front and it's got regen. So yeah. I don't know. I think the instances of hard braking will be few and far between. Yeah, you, you know, that's an excellent point. I mean, the reason we need hard emergency braking capabilities, right, is because we're humans and, mm -hmm. you know, we get ourselves into some sticky situations more often than not. You know, with with uh, with FSD driving, it should be able to predict, you know, 99.9% .9 of the stuff and just take you know, break at a, at a reasonable rate all the time. That was one of the factors they brought up in terms of crash testing is, yes, mm -hmm. you have a lot less frontal area, both in terms of uh, the distance from the bumper to the occupant home, but also in terms of width and height. But because it's a robo taxi, we should be able to control when a front end collision occurs. We're not going to be tailgating. We're not going to be going 90 right. in a, in a 50. Yeah. Uh, so that's all things that they can dial in on their own. A lot of this car comes down to, you have to shift your mindset. You have to think about it differently. I've seen people complaining, my garage, those doors won't fit in my garage. Well, great. 
why are you getting out of the car in a parking spot? Why would you do that? Get out where it's convenient. Tell the car to buzz off, which is not the term I used last time. I'm going <laughs> to try and try and keep that to a minimum for the sake of YouTube monetization. This is an exciting product. Um, I appreciate you coming on and and filling in the knowledge gaps. Uh, guys, in the comments, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it. Uh, check out Fast Wheels. Link in the description, of course. Ian, I appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. And everybody else, you know, comments remain mandatory. It's it's there's nothing I can do about it. I am so sorry. Uh, but I, everybody else like subscribe, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots in the comments.